Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode on the engine build. Um, I haven't been slack this week, I just had a couple of other bits to do. Um, changed the uh, summer tyres on my van, also had to do a little bit of um, rust repair on it. So now it's back to the engine build. I think this is the third episode, but a very important and very exciting episode I must say. Um, right, I just laid out a few things uh, that I'm going to go through and I also need to do a little bit of research because there's some bits I've kind of forgotten. But there's one thing that I thought of that is really important and I should have mentioned I think earlier um, is the oil pressure relief valve. Um, because when I was building the other engine um, I was warned that I should check for the amount of play in there because obviously this thing is uh, moving up and down and it causes wear on um, more the case than this because this is steel and obviously this is aluminium um, so yeah the actual um, where this actually slides up and down in which I don't know if you can see uh, maybe I'll show you a bit later when I move the camera but there's it actually fits in there and then it has a spring and then this plug that holds everything in position so obviously what happens this thing moves up and down depending on the oil pressure and it wears out the um, what would you call it the slot where it fits into um, so I don't remember what the allowance is for how much slack you're allowed um, but I think as long as it moves quite freely and it's not really loose, um, that's the main thing. Because actually on that engine, I was told early on to check it and I didn't. And I put everything back together again. It was one of the last things um, to put on the engine before I could fire it up. And it had actually worn. So you can, I mean, obviously you could make something like this on the lathe um, quite easily, but you can buy oversized ones. And I think if I remember the top of my head, it was 0.5 um, of a millimeter bigger than the original one. Um, so I was going to England for holiday. So I ordered one online and brought it back. And luckily it fitted perfectly and it's not been a problem, but Obviously, if you have excessive wear, then maybe it could be unusable. I don't know if the case can be unusable because of that, but um, yeah, that's quite important. So that's why I got that ready today. Um, the other thing I was going to mention is right here. Uh, this is the shaft that your distribut distributor um, slots into. So there's like an offset slot in there. Um, the same obviously on the bottom of your distributor. This fits inside the case and when you slide your distributor in it locates oops the shins are just off. Um, it locates like that and obviously this shaft, I think I mentioned it in the last video, this shaft um, connects to your cam, no sorry the, the brass gear that um, I heated up and put on um, the crank so that's what uh, this um, rotates with so when the crank rotates your distributor rotates and well that's how it works so what's important with this is you need to set this in a particular position in the engine and you also have these two shims I think you have at least two or maximum of three something like that oh, I dropped it again so you basically have to um, set how much lash this has um, when it sits inside and also you have to put it in a um, particular position because when you're setting your TDC, top dead centre, on number one um, you have a little notch, you can't see it on the camera but believe me there's a little notch there and when you're setting your timing, you put the engine on top dead centre on number one and that's a good um, 
starting point to where you set your time. So your, um, you put it on top dead center on number one, like I think I touched on in the, uh, I think it was a backfire diagnosis video, the first one, I think. Um, so you set your top dead center on the number one cylinder, and then you, um, you have some kind of guide where your distributor should be or line up um, so that the timing is somewhat in the right place. So you set this in the right place, which in turn um, locates this in the right place, if that makes any sense. So you have to basically put this shaft in, set the lash with these shims, get it in the right place so then your distributor is pointing in the right direction and you need to lock everything up um, so it doesn't lose its location um, but we'll cover that so that, that's one thing and I need to again look in the book exactly how that is done I've got the flywheel out again because I'll take the crank out put it on the table um, so it's a good base to work on because the next thing I need to do is fit the comrods and my friend Yanni that you saw in the last video, um, he has kindly marked these one, two, three, and four. Um, so that's where they were, obviously when he, before he stripped the engine. And we also have brand new bearings. So in probably the first video, I think it was, I did the measurements on the crank journals or the second video, I don't remember. Um, so we measured those and they were within tolerance, but obviously they had some wear on. So the new bearings that I have that were part of the kit um, are actually oversized, which means um, the diameter is a bit smaller um, to compensate for the wear on the crank, if that makes sense. So they're 0.5 millimeter, I believe that is. It says plus 0.5. Um, slightly bigger, yeah, to take up that um, wear, compensate for that wear. Uh, so I would like to at least take the crank out today, put it on the flywheel, and maybe at least make sure these fit, or they are, they're not too tight, not too loose, and yeah. That would be good. So my bearings um, in this, we have the, um, damn, what are they called? Lifters. We have the lifters. Um, these are not normally really inexpensive and like on the other engine, I just changed everything for new because it kind of went on that snowball. I bought a new crank, so I ended up buying new everything. Um, but these really look like barely used, so these will be fine. Um, yeah, so the lifters are here. Um, I have the tubes in the box. I don't need those just yet, but I might just slip these in because if I get if I, if I get these on okay, the crank can go back in here and this in and everything. So one step at a time. Um, I think I'll, I might do a series of shorter videos. It depends on how this goes today. Or I'll shoot this one video over a series of, of two or three days. So if I repeat myself, I apologize. And it's probably because I've forgotten what I've said, but let's see. Maybe I'll get lots done today, but let's just see. Right, I'm gonna cut the video and I shall take this crank out, put it on the table, and then we'll go from there. Right, now the crank is back out. Um, let's see. So, let's have a look at the bearings, shall we? Okay, so they come in this packet. Apparently this Silverline brand is supposed to be one of the better 
um, quality ones, which is what I was told, which is what I used in the other engine. So, yeah, and I've not had any problems, so that's something to bear in mind. Like I said in previous videos, I don't really like um, buying the cheaper quality stuff because in the past, I've usually regretted it. So they come in this vacuum packed package. And they're like, so they come in halves. I spent 10 minutes looking for that shim, by the way, and I can't find it anywhere. Typical, huh? So, so they come in halves like this. So obviously two halves per con rod, and the con rods held together with these two nuts. Um, and when you put these back together again, you have to make sure that the threads are clean from any grease or dirt or anything like that, um, because these are Loctited. And it's important that um, the Loctite won't set if your threads and your the nuts are dirty. So degrease them, clean them. Um, so this comes off like that, really simple. And a bit like the um, bearings for the cam, they have like these tangs on them, like these locating tangs. Let's see. Can you see on there? It's not focusing, is it? There. So they have those tangs, like little locating ones. So, like that, and they just fit in there like that. And these have these special ends on of these bolts to stop them spinning. Um, so the other important, this is very important, um, you notice that they have a marking here Right, so um, the tangs, or the, how, how do they say, bumps, the bumps on the con rod should be facing up. So what that means is when the crank is um, laying in the case, that say this is for number two, well let's take number, let's take number three, because this is gonna be cylinder number three. So the bump, oh, let's move the camera. Just because this is quite important. So obviously this is the top top of the engine because this is where the um, oil sump um, plug is. So there's your bump. So that will face to the top of the engine. This is cylinder number three and this is cylinder number four. So they've been marked on here, one, two, three, four. So that bump will be up, so it needs to go that way round on the crank, if that makes sense. So, um, one more thing I will actually add to this is um, one way you can check um, the gap between the surface of the um, crank and the surface of the bearing, um, you can use this stuff called plastic gauge, and they actually mention it in the book here. And I don't actually know what it's made of. They just call it um, plastic gauge, and it's, it looks a bit like licorice, like red licorice. Um, so you put a strip of that on here, uh, like like across there. And then you tighten the con rod up to the specific torque settings and without moving, without moving it, because it will obviously smear it. Um, and then you take, take it back off 
and then you measure the width that it's squashed the plastic gauge and that tells you um, if your clearance is within tolerance because it, it, it has a, a gauge on there that tells you how tight it is. Um, but I'm not going to use that because I've measured these. I have the oversized bearings and you can also feel if they're too tight or too loose. Um, so let's, let's bolt one on and see what it's like. I thought I'd show you this. Um, I was just trying to figure out which one was what, so I just put the crank roughly back in and then I have marked on the crank um, which number um, each bearing um, corresponds to. So this is the top of the engine and this is the left hand side. So the left hand side of the engine has um, number three and number four. So you can see that that bearing lines up with the number four. Uh, can you see that? Yeah, so that's, so I've marked it number four and then that would be number three and obviously the other side. So I just did that because when it's on the table and on different orientation, it's a bit confusing. So now we know um, what number Conrad rod goes to which bearing. Um, if you look in this book, you'll see this um, diagram here um, and the bumps on the con rods are facing the, towards the picture. So um, I've orientated my crank in the same position. So I now know that number two with the bump faces this way and mm. number two is marked here. So it goes this way around. You see that? Number two, bump this way. Easy. And also one thing to mention is that on each of these, you see there's a number. And the other half also has, should have, yeah, there it is. Also has a number. So if you forget like about which orientation these tangs go um, in correspondence with each other, you can always just um, match the numbers together. So the numbers always meet each other, if that makes sense. Yeah. All right, so I'll, I'll bolt, bolt this on and see how it feels. Also, um, as before, with all the other bearings, I'm going to use a little bit of white grease on there. Um, and obviously, like I said before, make sure everything's clean. You don't want any dirt or grit or anything like that between the bearing. Um, so wipe it with a cloth. Um, and uh, yeah, I'll bolt it on. One more thing I should mention is um, the orientation of these nuts is also very important. Um, if I take one of these, you can see that they have um, this end on there. Um, and that flat end um, goes towards this way. When you're cleaning, stuff to do with the engine you should always use paper towels not cloths like that and and the reason that they say is that you can obviously get pieces of cotton come off like this and they don't break down with the oil so if that gets in your engine it can block oilways and all sorts so I shouldn't really be using that cloth there. So orientation of the bolts. I'm not going to do this up 
type or to specification I just want to like nip it up see if anything's binding or anything doesn't feel right if the bearings feel like the wrong size or if the if it's not worn completely round then it can be like a tight spot and whatever so it's 13 millimeter let's just nip these bad boys up it's not 13 millimeter it's 14 millimeter let's get another one I hope it's 14 and not 50. It's 14 millimeters. Okay, so I just nip these up like so. Not too tight. And when I spin that, It's really smooth and there's there's like a very small amount of resistance which is good because it means it's not sloppy and loose if it, if it was like really wobbly and, and loose obviously then there's a lot of work there's, there's supposed to be some play in that by the way that's, um, but yeah it feels feels really nice because obviously when the oil is pumping around the engine it creates a barrier um, between the, the bearing and the uh, crank journals um, so there's like a, a, a layer of oil between so if it's too tight obviously then you're having metal on metal which is not good if it's too loose then it, it's it bounces around and that's not good either so but that feels really good okay I shall put the rest of them together and hopefully they'll all be as good as this one. Fingers crossed. Okie dokie, so I have um, bolted them all on in the right orientation, in the right order, um, and according to the picture in the book, so you can see the crank is that way around, the bump should be facing this way, which is up when it's in the, inside the engine, um, so they all feel really nice there's no notching or tight spots nothing super happy with that you would not believe the problems i had with the other engine i built i think the first crank i had was bent so they were like had these sticking points well, no, it was actually when I put it in the engine and then um, put the case together and tightened the case a little bit, then uh, the crank had a tight spot, so then it was bent. Um, so I measured it, realized it was bent, had to buy a new one. Then um, that's another thing, actually, I haven't talked about is these. Um, this is where the gudgeon pins go, um, which hold your piston on which we will cover in another later video. Uh, one other thing I'll just mention before I um, go ahead and tighten these up is that I mentioned that there's a clearance um, inside here between the um, conrod and the side of the um, crank. So I just looked in the book and it said between 
the tolerance is between 0.1 and 0.4 of a millimeter. So I have my feeler gauges here. So if um, one goes, which it does, perfect. And if four doesn't go, that means, yeah, it doesn't fit in there. So that one's good. So they're within tolerance. So it's like this side lash there, you see? So I'll check all of those as well and hopefully there'll be no problems. Right now, people, this is where things are getting really exciting. Um, I just looked up in the book, uh, the talk settings, and it says in here, um, where is it? Uh, you have to tighten these nuts in three stages. Um, 15 foot pounds, 20 foot pounds, and 24 foot pounds. So I just went and got the torque wrench, and this is in Newton meters. So I had a Google and converted these figures to um, Newton meters. So there's the three stages that I wrote down. Um, and I also went to get um, some Loctite. So this is medium strength. You don't want a high strength because if you at some stage rebuild this engine, uh, well, you don't need high strength. Medium is fine. So I'm going to take these nuts back off, put a bit of thread locker on there, and do these three stages on each and every one. Okay. Always been taught that you should just put the thread lock on. It's in focus, just like that, because um, when you spin on the nut, it spreads it, and you don't want to go crazy with this stuff, you know. You see, so many people overdoing everything, tighten things too much, apply too much seal, too much thread lock, or all this. So. You see, when you turn that on, it spreads it. So remember, the nuts are the right way around. I'll just a uh, little nip up. Like that. Nice and even as well. You don't want to tighten one a lot more than the other. Like that. Okay, I'll put the camera here. Okay. If I do this first one in the three stages, and then that, so I've set the first one is 20, 15 foot pounds is 20.4. So that's 20. I don't think the first stage has to be this accurate, but we're doing it this way. So 20.4. So if you listen, you might not be able to hear, this is quite a quiet one, but there's a click when it gets to where it should be. Click. And then. Okay, that's the first stage. Second is 27. So that's 25. 26, 27. Right. It's quite close to the first one. Okay, and the last one is 32.5. So let's go to 31.2.5. Okay. And let's hope that it still spins nice and freely and evenly. Okay, just double check these. Yep. There we go. Right, ready? Oh, damn, that's perfect. 
That is so perfect. Yeah, boy. Right, I'm gonna do the other three. Okay, um, they're all um, tightened to 32.5 Newton meters. Um, they all have their bumps facing in the right direction. All the nuts are the right way around. They all have Loctite. They all spin really nice. Um, so now I'm gonna drop it back into the case So, I have hanging down um, number three and number four because I have the left hand side of the case. Um, so I'm holding obviously the one and two. And then I drop it down. Then in my one of my last videos, I put those um, marks on the Bear in the sharpie mark so I can locate these. They're still there. And then this one should slot. Okay. Oh, that was holding it. So. There it goes. There we go. Okay, so it should. Oh man, that's perfect. That's so cool. Look at that. Okay, um, I think that's enough for this uh, video because um, I think I should do it in sections rather than a whole load of things going on at the same time. Plus, the videos get so long, um, so it's better to break them down a little bit. Um, plus, I want to go home, to be honest. Um, but I hope that um, it's clear enough what I've been explaining. And um, I've repeated things many times, like the orientations and things like that, because it's really important. and. Um, I don't want to just, just gloss over those um, small details because uh, yeah, because it's easy to, to forget or, or, or not emphasize enough on those key points. So that's why I many times said about orientation and, and everything, so it's really important. And also, it's really good to write things down because when you're looking in this book, they often um, add these details like this in the text somewhere. So you have to, actually on this page, it says um, for the talk settings, refer to the step which they were explaining about the plastic age. So then you have to look. So I always like to write these things down and then it's right in front of you. You don't have to think uh, when you're talking everything up each time. I'm just gonna put this case back together. Uh, put it back in the corner and then um, in the next video I shall um, I'll do the bits what I explained in, earlier in the introduction I'll put this shaft in I, yeah I need to find that shim somewhere um, before this goes in because I really need it um, I'll also put this oil pressure relief valve I have checked it um, off camera so I know that it fits all right, but we'll cover that. And then also I'll put these in and they're pretty simple enough. So yeah, the next video we'll do that. We'll put the distributor on, um, lifters in, cam back in. And yeah, we'll go from there. That's quite an important stage, the next one really. All right, so thanks again for watching. Um, Please like and subscribe. I can't believe uh, I checked this morning and I already have, was it 104 subscribe, uh, subscribers? So I'm really grateful and I'm, I can't quite believe that it's gone over 100. Um, so I'm really hoping that people are enjoying these. Um, also had some nice comments, which is really great. Um, it's nice to hear 
well, positive things, obviously. Uh, and there was an, also a helpful um, remark somebody made about the um, distributor, the one, two, three ignition distributor that I'm running on there. They said that they had noticed that I had a vacuum advanced um, distributor. Um, I did actually yesterday um, block it off to see if it made any difference, but it didn't seem to make any difference. The car's running really well now, no popping or banging. Um, so it's running really well and also with the vacuum advance um, i believe it works mainly on the lower rev range so general driving it shouldn't make too much of a difference i knew it when i ordered it that it had the vacuum advance and i wouldn't be using it it's just that i thought that if it goes in another car um, it will be suitable for for everything and would last me a long time so it hasn't seemed to have made much of a difference but um, yeah it was nice to have a a helpful comment so yes so let's get back to it next time thanks for watching stay cool cheers